Building a business startup cannot be done without modern workspace and full mentoring, technical and infrastructural support to help them turn their ideas into a successful business. Technology and Ecosystem Advisor, Idea Nigeria, Nnamdi Nwanzi shares more on the importance of having the right basis when starting an IT business. Welcome to Tech Trends. Thanks for having me. You've been a developer for quite a while. How do you see the developer community in Nigeria so far? Uh, I see it as a really great developer community. There are a lot of folks in here that are learning things right from university and on their own. I think there was a survey recently done that said about 98% of the developers in Nigeria are self-taught. So it's growing by leaps and bounds. Yeah, but it, there, there seems to be a dearth of skills uh, in the sense that a lot of Nigerians still export jobs. Why is that? Well, I, I, I see it as a twofold uh, problem. One thing is at the university level, uh, the, the lecturers are learning the material as they're teaching it. And so they don't have the, the depth of knowledge to impart to their students. And on the second part, some of the developers are self-taught, and so they're learning some bad habits in addition to learning the language. And I think one of the things they could start doing is start weeding themselves off that bad, of those bad habits. You mentioned the university lecturers. Uh, have you done research to find out the kind of language they teach students today? Uh, yes, I have. I actually lectured at one of the universities there. Private? private university and they were teaching uh, Fortran to their students and uh, <laughs> there, there are very few people using Fortran at this level. There, my, there are a few banks that are still using legacy systems in the U.S. but uh, mostly people are developing in PHP, Ruby, C Sharp, much more modern languages. So do you call for a change or something of our educational system? I'll call for a complete overhaul of the system, if possible. Right, let's get them learning these modern languages, learning how to do database structures, learning. Uh, even as you start developing, you, you notice that the language doesn't matter. I mean, some languages have some features that are geared towards something, like C Sharp you know, is geared towards Microsoft products, uh, Assembly geared towards real-time systems, but you know, focus on the architecture and then think about the language afterwards. Okay, so tell us some of your experiences you got from the U.S. and how they can be applied to Nigeria. Okay, so one of the things was my education there. I, one of the classes I took was data structures using Java. It wasn't teaching Java, it was data structures where you learn how to actually build software that is resilient, data that data structures that can actually hold your data pretty well, and craft a software solution that is scalable as well, and, and not focus on the language, so to speak. One thing I've noticed in Nigeria is there's a lot of focus on the language itself, uh, which leads to not building software that can scale or has resiliency in the software. So what are you doing to share some of those ideas and knowledge with the younger developers here? Okay, so at IDEA, we actually offer a course that happens on Tuesdays, and we go through your databases, we go through your algorithms, we go through your data structures. We have a complete curriculum that spans about eight to 10 weeks, where we take each of these topics and go from a bird's eye view and start breaking it down to the micro level and importing that knowledge. And you could come in not knowing any languages or knowing one language. I, I'm lucky and fortunate enough that I know about 15 different languages. So come in with whatever language that you know and we'll start building this foundation. Uh, and is it free? It's free. So, so tell us, what are some of the languages that you know and you teach? Okay, so of course there's PHP. <laughs> uh, I actually started developing way back in 1990-something, <laughs> doing Pascal. <laughs> so <you're not> that... <laughs> <laughs> I haven't touched Pascal since. <laughs> so there's C Sharp, there's Java, there's JavaScript, there's HTML, there's CSS, SQL, 
C++, uh, the list goes on. <laughs> yeah, but, but Namdi, when would we start developing solutions that we can export? Uh, I think we could start developing those solutions right now. Uh, we have a team at IDEA that's led by Chibweze Opata, SCI Group, and he's actually building solutions in for Nigerians, and he's been able to get some customers outside of Nigeria. So we're currently exporting some solutions right now. So like an Andela model? Exactly. It's like a mini Andela, but geared towards the local market. In, in your opinion, uh, do you think that developers are getting enough support here? Uh, I think there's a, it goes back to that, where can developers learn their craft and hone their craft? Unfortunately, most of the resources that we do have that are well known are still outside Nigeria. So a lot of developers will go to Stack Overflow and they'll go to other Google Docs or they'll go to uh, GitHub, Udemy, Coursera, and they're well known. The little pockets of, of knowledge that are in Nigeria aren't as well known. And so even coming to IDEA to gain some of that knowledge, not a lot of people know that IDEA has this, does this course every week where you can come in and learn new material. For free? For free. And you don't have to be a computer science student? No, you do not. <laughs> All you have to do is have the drive and have the passion. That's it. As long as you have both of those, the rest falls into place. From your experience working with startups, um, has there been any sign that startups with um, technical background, say sciences, perform better? I haven't been able to see that so far. But what we have seen is that startups that have a technical co-founder are able to go to the market faster, able to scale better, and actually have a full rounded team where they're not spending money to go and get <laughs> to outsource their developer. For Indians, yeah? <laughs> yes. No, but, but, but seriously speaking, uh, Indians are, are actually um, taking a, a huge chunk of the pie. How can we change this tie? Okay, I mean, they, they really are taking a huge chunk of the pie. I mean, even the outsourcing market is about $70 billion, and India is getting a huge chunk of that. Uh, even their game development development industry is almost $1 million per year, I mean, $1 billion per year. So what we can do to get a chunk of that market is one of the first things I've seen is if our developers can reduce their costs as well. So they're way too high, huh? Yes, they are. I've spoken to developers in the U.S. and they're charging about 30 to 50 percent less than what Nigerians charge for a similar product. And since they have you know, they've typically gone to university. They're not self-taught. I mean, some of them are, but then they have a real drive and passion. So the, the quality of what they produce for a cheaper price tends to be... Yeah, but, 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 but Nandi, do you really blame the developer here? Because he has to literally pay for all his infrastructure and the cost of data. So why wouldn't it be more expensive than the guy in the US? No, I mean, and I completely get that. But the thing is, if I can get a better quality product for cheaper, should I pay more or should I go for a cheaper? You should be a patriot, man. <laughs> no, I am a patriot, which is why I get all my Gary from Nigeria. <laughs> okay, but, but we, we, we need something about that. Um, what are your recommendations? So one, developers, go out, go out to places like IDEA. Go out to universities, places where you can really hone your craft. If someone is pushing a language in front of you, rather than a foundation or architecture, find a new person. Another thing is, and I know this is a hard one, bring your price down a little bit. <laughs> and, and, we, and you can export more. I, the, there's, there's a lot of Forex to be earned out there. Yeah, I agree. Do you have time to code? Uh, yes, I do. Every once in a while, I have, I have maybe an hour or two a week to code extra. <laughs> Because I hear what's the coder, always the coder. Uh, yes. <laughs> thank you for being on today. Uh, thank you for having me. <laughs>